Well, why men aren't flying yet? Nobody's licked the basic problem. But you said this Greek watch him a card. He grew wings and flew. Well, I can't swear to it. But it seems it was rumored that this mythological character who lived on uh, Mount Olympus, well, he was flying all over the place one day, and the sun melted the wax that was holding his feathers on. And he fell to the ground like an arrow that had run out of poop and <laughs> splattered himself for good. Serves him right. Any fool that would try to fly with melted wax does not deserve to fly. Well, the Greeks thought enough of him to make him a deity. Deity? Just because he fell and died? <laughs> No, Charlie, a deity is a man who becomes a, a fable or a legend. Like, well, like when the Indians tell their great warriors. They, they make them into myths. What's so hard about keeping feathers in? Any horse thief or wife beater could fly if that's all it takes. Well, how do you figure that? Tar. Did you ever see anybody tar and feathered? No. You can't get them feathers out no how. The sun might roast you, but you're not going to drop any feathers. <laughs> Charlie? You know, you could have the answer. I could? Well, just wait till we circle up tonight. I'll get them geese and that old Turk I've been hoarding, and I'll show you something. Honest. And if you're real nice, Barney, I may make you some wings and a tail, too. How would you like that? Hey, that's good thinking, Charlie. We do our flying during the night, and then we don't take any chance of the sun melting our feathers loose. Barney, what did they call that Greek that flew? Oh, a myth. Mr. Charlie Wooster. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Charlie? Yeah? What happens if we jump off the cliff and these things don't work? You don't have much confidence in me, do you? I'm telling you, Barney, for the last time, I will personally guarantee that you can fly if you do exactly as I do. And don't get too smart for your britches. I mean feathers. That is, you get the hang of it. Now's the time a man should use his senses. Yeah, well, why don't we forget the whole thing, Charlie? No, people just say that all the hours I spent sitting and staring into space was wasted. After all, what we're going to do for mankind will prove that I've been thinking. Yes, sir, thinking all the time. And studying, too. Nature, my boy, nature. That's the only school for a myth. Charlie, you should have figured out how to grow feathers instead of whiskers. I'd make a funny-looking duck, wouldn't I? Let's get this thing over with. Don't rush me, boy, don't rush me. Can't you see my mind is working? I told you I've been studying nature. I've even taken notes on how birds fly and how they think. Well, as good as eagles and vultures fly. You know yourself, they're kind of clumsy on the ground, don't you? Well, stand back, boy, and give me plenty of room. I'm going to take a run and start at this.
You're gonna be famous, Charlie. Don't forget we're old friends. I was only kidding you about your cooking. I really like it. Come on down now, Charlie. Come on down. Come on down and get my breakfast, or I'll pull out your tail feathers. <laughs> <laughs> you're a fine bunch of friends. <laughs> One minute you're cheering, I get my tail feathers caught, and the next minute you're jeering. Well, that'll teach you to sleep in a hammock. Charlie, you better come down to Earth with the rest of us. Swaying in the breeze makes you dream. Do it on your own time. We're pulling out in 20 minutes, and I want something a little more substantial than just a joke for breakfast. I almost break my neck, and that's funny. Very funny. One of these days, I'll make you all laugh out of the other side of your faces. You wait and see. <laughs> oh, Charlie, if you find enough eggs in there to make an omelet, don't put any toadstools in it, all right? They had one nightmare after another. You did? Where did you disappear to last night? What? You're a fine one. I give you gear and I teach you, and then what do you do? What did I do? Ran off. That's what you did long before sunup. You didn't think they'd stick in, did you? You didn't believe me, huh? Charlie, I think you've been eating some of your own toadstool omelet. You've been having hallucinations, like you said, Bill. Them's mushrooms, and I don't need them to fly, either. Is that what you were doing with your arms flopping out of that hammock? You stay out of this, Hawks. It's none of your business. Go ahead, Bunny. Scramble them up. Put in something for flavor and filler. Okay. Just Charlie, kidding. no toadstools, all right? Honey, you know what a myth is? Well, sure. I, I told you about a Greek myth yesterday, Charlie. Don't you remember? You did. All right, put in all the toadstools and the mushrooms we got. There's nothing to worry about, Barney. Because a man with a vision needs to dream, you know. <laughs> dream. What's bothering you, Charlie? Hmm? Nothing. Why? You've been searching the sky all day. What are you looking for? Changing the weather? Well, it could be, but it ain't. If I tell you something, you won't laugh with. Why should I? I've got a terrible itch to fly. Oh, that's natural. Everybody gets an itch to do something. Gets too strong for you, scratch it. Don't tell me you never dreamt of flying. Well, I, uh, I did have a dream last night. Of course, it's, uh, it wasn't about flying, exactly. It was more down to earth. Yeah, but you got your eye on that young Heatherton girl. Do you know Hector Heatherton? You mean Henpecked Hector the mouse? <laughs> well, if you knew him, you wouldn't call him a mouse. His wife wears the pants in the family, don't she? He's got eight kids. Yeah, seven girls. That proves my point. Well, he's a real smart man. You should hear what he has to say. Yeah, I know. All the girls' names start with H. And that little baby boy, he calls him Homer. Now, how smart can you be? All the hand-me-down dresses have the proper initial, H. Hey, I never thought of that. He's a real honest-to-goodness inventor. I bet he's even a genius. He's a bootmaker. He's gonna come out with one of his inventions someday, and I bet he makes all kinds of money. He does. He'll go to jail, them moneymakers. Fellow sold me one back in St. Louis one time. It didn't work. Cost me six months' pay. You know, he says he almost has it figured out so a man can fly. <laughs> my love. I know you'll find it hard to believe, but I've been thinking about it a long time, and I finally know how a man can fly. <laughs> fly? Well, that does it. That does it, Hector Heatherton. For 17 years, I've put up with your insane ideas, giving you a plate, Henrietta. Day after day, one crazy idea after another. If it was up to you, you'd put all your time and hard-earned money into these endless, impossible inventions of yours, and we'd all starve. <sighs> well, as sure as I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here, your children go without shoes, a shoemaker's children going without shoes. And uh, that's just what it says in the Bible. Mama, Papa's just joking about flying, aren't you, Papa? Don't you tell me about your father. I'm the mother of his eight children, and I know when he's making a joke and when he is not. Please, my love. <laughs> Don't please me, my love. I've listened to your hair-brained ideas one after another. Holly, take your elbows off the table. It doesn't upset you that we have had to move from one town to another when people get word that you're a cracked pot? Hector, you promised me that you would keep these idiotic inventions of yours to yourself. 
You gave me your word that you would not go around begging people who would listen to you to put up money to help build these nonsensical ideas. Mama, Papa only told you what you asked him. He has no intentions of building a flying machine, do you, Papa? And I told you that I know your father. When he has been thinking about it a long time, he intends doing it. Hector Heatherton, have you given one thought as to what will happen when word gets around this wagon train that you intend on building a, a, a machine that a man can fly in? Mama, Barney's coming. Hmm? He's coming. Oh, well, this is an unexpected surprise, Heather. You've got a, you've got a caller. Well, it's nice of you to, to come by, Barney. Uh, please sit down. There's always room for one more in this family. Uh, Mr. Heatherton, I... Uh... Sit down, my young friend. You came by at a propitious moment. Hector, love. Barnaby came by to see Heather. I, now, I'm sure he doesn't want to listen to any of your idle chatter. Well, as a matter of fact, Miss Heatherton, I came by to ask Mr. Heatherton something. If you don't mind, it'll only take a minute. Mind? Well, why should I mind? Why, it'll only take Heather a few minutes to finish her chores, and I'm sure she'd be most grateful if she didn't have to be rushed, wouldn't you, Heather, dear? Mama. Uh, uh, now, you sit right down there next to, uh, to Mr. Heatherton, and we'll all be quiet, won't we, children, so Barnaby and Papa can talk. Uh, would you mind, Mr. Heatherton? Uh, what I have to ask you is kind of private. Uh. Hector, love, don't just sit there. Can't you see the poor boy's blushing? Don't you remember how you felt when you first come to talk to my Papa? <laughs> I remember like it was only yesterday. Mama, huh? <laughs> oh, Heather, baby, my first daughter. Huh. Only like it was yesterday. Hector! Hector, now you pay attention to what Barnaby has to say and don't let your mind go wandering. And you know what I mean. What I have to ask you, uh, well, I didn't think it would be a good idea in front of everybody. You're about the only person that I've ever taken into my confidence that hasn't made me regret it. You'd make a fine son-in-law. But don't you think you're rushing it? Besides, a cobbler with eight children won't give his daughters much of a dark. Well, I, I didn't do exactly like you asked. I mean, about your inventions and your ideas. Oh, my ideas, my inventions. They were only talk. That's all they ever will be. Think twice about taking on responsibility, son. Charlie Wooster thinks a lot like you, so I, I thought it'd be all right if I told him. Marriage is a fine institution. But if you think you might owe something to the future of mankind... Charlie thinks like me? Oh, yeah, yeah. He gets some pretty crazy ideas that are hard to swallow. I don't see how I can help you. Cooking is the one thing I haven't given too much thought to. Well, I have an idea based on the siphon principle for brewing coffee. Could revolutionize the old-fashioned coffee pot. Then there's a bottle cap I've been working on. Simple as my idea to put a rubber on the end of the lead pencil for erasing mistakes. <laughs> what could be writer? <laughs> I mean, Charlie thinks like me. Well, I had this dream, you see. Only it wasn't exactly a dream. It was more like a vision, if you know what I mean. I have dreams that are realer than real, too. You're right. They aren't exactly dreams. They are visions. Our good friend Barney said you and me wouldn't laugh at each other. Oh, I, I wouldn't have told him about your inventions otherwise. And Charlie knows how it is with your wife, don't you, Charlie? Did you tell him about my idea to put sails on the wagons? Just think what it would be like to lie back and let the trade wind blow you from west to east. Yes, but our wagon train business is from the east to the west. There are problems with that idea, yeah. But Rome wasn't built in a day. No. Did he tell you of my invention of a razor contraption that's impossible for you to cut yourself with? I call it a safety razor. You mean you could shave with a razor without cutting yourself? Yeah. I don't see it myself. I got it all worked out in theory. All I need is a few dollars for tooling up. And believe me, there's a fortune in it. Well, uh, Charlie isn't interested in shaving, are you, Charlie? No, but a lot of people are. You sure you got it figured out? I can't see it myself. Charlie, Mr. Heatherton hasn't got all night. 
Safety razor. Make a fortune. <laughs> I got a formula for treating rubber with sulfur that makes it so you can make wheels out of it. Think what that's worth. Yeah, but you say it isn't practical yet because of the smell, right? When you're an inventor, you lick one problem at a time. Every idea has something to overcome. But you must have a vision of the end. And you try to achieve it. Vision, vision. That's what Barney said. You and I had the same vision. We have? Which one? Flying. Believe me, just as sure as I'm standing on these feet, I had wings and I flew all night until almost sunup. All night? Till sunup? Amazing. Would you trust me and show me your mechanism? Oh, Charlie doesn't have a mechanism. He ate toadstools one night and had a nightmare. Oh. You mean that you just had a dream that you flew? Uh-huh. And now oh. he's got the itch, right, Charlie? Yeah, but you got the mechanism, ain't you, Hector? <laughs> Not exactly. I've been weighing and toying with all the laws of physics, and they aren't against a man flying. Well, don't worry about the laws. We're way west of the Mississippi, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice to know, but you don't know my wife. Is she the one who keeps you from flying? I haven't the wherewithal to build a mechanism. A man with eight children should keep his feet on the ground. I couldn't interest you in a perpetual motion machine, could I? It would be a real boon to mankind and cost a very little to build. All I want to do is fly. Mr. Atherton, if we got you the wherewithal, would you build the machine? Charlie would fly it and tell everybody he invented it, then you wouldn't get in trouble with your wife, right, Charlie? Yes, sir, that's what you want. <laughs> well, I must be honest with you. <laughs> People will laugh at you, and it's not without danger. Well, I'm not afraid. I'm afraid. I am. Maybe you're right, Barney. Maybe he is handpicked. Hm. Well, I could only get a minute with him. But he says I'm supposed to come by and see Heather tonight, and he'll get the plans to you through me. And he says if Mrs. Heather ever finds out he's seeing us, there'll be no deal. Are you sure this Hector ain't some kind of a crackpot or something? He's no more crack than you. Oh, sure. Morning, Bill. Morning, Bill. Did you uh, sleep well? Yeah, except that you were talking in your sleep all night and Charlie was making weird sounds. Weird sounds? Sound like an eagle fighting with its mate. We wasn't fighting. Barney, being on the threshold of something big as we are kind of makes the day intolerably long, don't you think? <laughs> on the threshold? Yeah. You're, uh, you're getting pretty lofty with your talk, aren't you? Lofty? You think I'm just a cook? You don't visualize my potential. That's what's the matter with you. Potential? With my imagination, the sky's the limit. I got ideas. I know what I got. And what do you got? <sighs> I got all kinds of troubles with Heather Heatherton. That's what I got. It's because of... Man gives in to home cooking once doesn't mean he has honorable intentions, does it? You can't mix business with pleasure. That's what's the matter with you. What do you mean by that? Well, give a little, take a little. That's life, you know. Yeah. Your father's never been able to keep anything to himself before this. So one way or another tonight, I'll find out exactly what passed between Barnaby and him. Oh, you're just like your father, on the go, on the go. Sit still, Homer. There's nothing on the paper. What? I have to take every precaution. I wrote it all out in invisible ink. Tell him to dip the paper in tea. Hector? Yes, my love. I was just pointing out the constellations to Barnaby. <laughs> Don't tell Heather what we're up to, no matter how she tries to get that up, you understand? But the moon is part of our solar system. And someday, when man has learned how to fly, he will travel to it in less time than it's taking us to cross our continent. Uh, uh, Barnaby, I, I hope you don't take my husband too seriously. Sometimes he'll say the weirdest things just to amuse you. Won't you, Hector? Yes, my love. Everybody knows the moon was made for young lovers to look up and lie back and dream of being alone. Evening, Barnaby. Oh, evening, Heather. Uh, would, would you like to take a walk? 
Didn't I tell you not to go ranting and raving to Barnaby and filling his head full of ideas? <laughs> you needn't worry. They won't be sneaking off to the moon. Not for a few days, anyway. No, I, I guess not. I mean, we, we really don't know each other well enough for that, do we? Uh, for what? Well, being really alone, silly. What else? Oh, you, you can trust me anywhere. Uh, uh, Heather, don't you think a boy and a girl can be just friends? You know, if, if they have something in common? Just because they take a walk once in a while doesn't mean... Uh, Heather, why don't we sit down here and talk for a while? Well, uh, why don't we walk a little further into the woods? Uh, no, 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 this is fine. This is fine. This is far enough. <laughs> here, sit down. Anyway, I can't stay out here too long. I've got a, uh, got a letter to write. And you know what happens if you keep putting those things off. <laughs> well, that's it, isn't it? And that's why Papa won't tell us what you two have been talking about. Oh, no, that's not it at all. <laughs> what are you talking about? Plain as the nose on your face. I swear your father never said anything about my nose once. You've got a girlfriend back home. Admit it. I don't care. Why should I? We're just acquaintances. Uh, Heather, I, uh, I want you to believe this no matter what you get to think of me. I, uh, I have no girlfriend back home or anywhere. Matter of fact, I, I, I'm, I'm not interested in girls for anything permanent, if you know what I mean. <laughs> no more sense to me than <laughs> dipping a letter in tea. But uh, that's a fact. Your mom did ask me to call on you. She says us, uh, us young people should be friends, you know, and everybody on the wagon train's one big family anyway. And you having all the sisters, it's kind of nice to have a brother around. Of course, you do have Homer, but you're still diapering him. And uh, your mom offering me pie and coffee, a uh, man gets an awful urge for a home cooking once in a while, if you know what I mean. You swear you don't have a girlfriend back home? Oh, no, I swear I don't even have a back home. Then who are you writing that letter to? Oh, the letter. The letter. Well, that can wait. That can wait. I was, I was writing for a, uh, a book advertised in the Police Gazette. Uh, what every young man should know. Barney, you're silly. Seventeen, you don't need a book like that. You should be trying to, to learn something about earning money so you can raise a family. Uh, oh, look at my father. He married at 18. And Mother says she would have never accepted it, except he was an excellent shoemaker. You know, you just can't live on the love and silly ideas, don't you think? Well, I, I don't know. There's something to say for silly ideas in the right time and place, don't you think? Barney, you're just like every other man. You're impossible. What are you putting in the coffee now, Charlie? It's not coffee, it's tea. And I'm not putting anything in, I just took out. If it's any of your business. It's a big secret, huh? What makes you think that? Well, I'd like to have a silver dollar for every message I carried during the war that was written with invisible ink. You're pretty smart, ain't you? If you had any idea what was on this paper, you wouldn't have brains enough to believe it. It's history right here in the making under our noses. Not only that, it's over a million bucks to boot. Huh. Now go ahead and laugh at that. All right, Charlie, get it off your chest before you explode. You know, for days now, you've had a secret. It's about ready to bust your eardrums unless you let somebody in on it. You sure you won't laugh at me? Did I laugh at you when you were going to patent your coffee because the word got around that it'd take the whiskers off your chin faster than a razor would? You promise you won't tell anybody if I tell you? Charlie, I won't laugh at you, and I won't tell anybody about your secret. After all, we're old friends, aren't we? All right, I'll tell you. But I wouldn't tell you if I didn't need your help. Old friends or no old friends. These plans are kind of complicated. And I'm not above admitting that two heads are better than one. And another thing, Bill. <laughs> My arithmetic is kind of rusty. How's yours? Come on, Charlie, and tell me. I'm chomping at the bit. All right, I'll tell you. But promise me one thing. I get to do it first because it's my idea. And I'm not about to be done out of the fun and the glory. 
What are you going to do, Charles? Fly? How did you know that? His wife was right. Hector's nothing but a big blabbermouth. Well, if he's told anybody else the know-how of this diagram, I'll sue him, Bill. That's what I'll do. I'll sue him. No, I won't. I'll tell her. And she'll skin that yellow-bellied cuckoo bird to life. Charlie, nobody told me anything. I was just making a joke and said the craziest thing I could think of. Now I'm crazy, huh? Well, listen. I'll have you know my good friend and fellow inventor, Hector Heatherton, has it all diagrammed right here. We're going to make a miniature flying machine. And then we're going to make one that I can fly in. Now go ahead and laugh at that. Me. Yes, we know, Barney. Hector sent any new plans tonight? No, but I, I think he was trying to tell me he was going to get away from his wife and come by. Well, that wouldn't hurt him any to stick out his neck. The most she could do is chop it off. Think of all the trouble I went to get in this silk he said he had to have. You mean these ladies whatchamacallit? You think it's easy. You try to talk higher Roebuck out of all the silk whatchamacallits he's taken west to open up his dry goods store, and you'll see. It's enough to make a grown man blush. <laughs> Charles, that beard of yours, you can afford to be embarrassed pink. You know, I'm the one that should get the medal for finding those bamboo poles that Hector said we had to have. Where'd you get the bamboo, Bill? Joaquin Costa. He's hauling it up to Oregon. He's going to use it for salmon fishing. You know, Charlie never tried to talk a Portuguese fisherman out of his equipment. You know what he told me? No. That his father brought those bamboo poles all the way from the Azores. Said they were a family heirloom. Well, how'd you get it from him? Money. You won't have to fish anymore after the deal he made with me. He can retire. If Hector's plans are wrong, 10 years of our good, hard-earned money is going up in smoke. Oh, yeah. yeah. Heather's mother's just liable to put a shotgun in my back if she ever finds out why I'm courting her daughter. <laughs> Never fear, my friend. I'm here gambling my life. This idea is going to work. Listen, we got this thing almost finished, and nobody knows how or why it's going to work. You know, if it hadn't been for that bird brain friend of mine, I wouldn't be involved in this. You know that, don't you? Well, it's these firecrackers here under the wings. So we're going to make it go, right, Mr. Yeah. The Chinese have employed rockets in warfare for over hundreds of years. The, the basic law of physics is that for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. Yeah, but I ain't never seen a bird yet that had a rocket exploding under his tail. And that's what you're fixing to have me do if this model goes up. The lift you will get from these wing surfaces will carry you aloft and allow you to glide down. Never fear. Who's afraid? Glue the silk to the bones, and you can test her out. You've done a good job, men. Measure out the gunpowder exactly as I stipulated, and set the fuses correctly. Bring me the tidings, son. First chance you get. You are about to make history, and I salute you. Charlie sick? You mean uh, sick, sick, or in the head? Yeah. Well, now that you mention it, have you noticed he's been acting a little queer than usual these last couple of days? Yes. Yeah. You and Barney haven't been acting exactly normal either. There isn't something. You think I don't know about that maybe I should know about, is it? Bill, will you look at me when I ask you a civil question? Well, I never knew you not know about everything that's going on that, uh, that matters. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not supposed to be possible to commit the perfect crime, either. There's still some people foolish enough to try it. Sure are a lot of foolish people around, aren't there? Yeah. And if that Charlie and Barney aren't up to something, I'll eat my hat. Well, probably tastes better than his cooking. Well, are you going to tell me, or do I have to find out for myself? Well, all I can tell you is what they told me. Yes? Well, Charlie said that if you heard a real loud blast, uh, I'd be surprised that uh, if you insisted, well, anyway, he said if, if you got curious about it, to uh, don't pay any mind to that big, loud, gunpowder noise you're going to hear. It'd just be a, well, another 
dead duck for the pot. Ducks in this part of the country. He is off his rocker. Well, Chris, those, uh, those aren't crows. Well, nah. and the gun hasn't been invented that'll knock him down from there, either. You don't know Charlie. You mean he's trying to invent a gun that'll knock down ducks from that height? Well, he isn't that cracked yet. I don't think. <laughs> no. It must be it. That's why he's been acting like a female duck. It is? He thinks he's got a way to call him. Make him fly down. Huh? Yeah, you, you might say that. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, 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 yep. She's fine. She's Look at it, Charlie. Oh, she's Look at it go. Boy, we don't hear about this. Boy, that looks great. Oh, watch her. Don't let your eyes tight. Now, go on. Hurry up, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Hey, buddy. Barney! Water, Barney! Don't let out of your sight. I see her yet. What are you doing that for? Shh. It's a little invention of mine. The dripping water makes the fire last twice as long. You see, based on the expansion of matter by heat, plus the inertia of surface tension, and the rate of change of water from liquid to gas... We tried out the model this morning. Well, tell Charlie and Bill to build the big bird exactly 10 to 1. Well, how do you know it flew? How? It's my creation. That's how. Well, you don't seem very excited, considering. My wife knows like a hound dog if I get excited. She does? We better get distance between me and her. She picks up vibrations. She has a sixth sense. Uh, she, she couldn't know what I'm thinking, could she? All women know what all men are thinking. <sighs> well, I don't know what else to do or to tell you, Heather. These uh, lavender and fresh mint perfume sachets are supposed to make a man open up, but he's such a tight one, it wouldn't count on it. I told you, Mama, Barney promised me real soon that they had something to tell me. Mm-hmm, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. I don't know what he can tell you then that he can't tell you now. He said the truth was weighing on his conscience. <laughs> when a man tells a woman the truth, I don't mind telling you, I don't like it. I can't put my finger on it, but just like Hiram Roebuck being bought out of silk panties, sworn to secrecy. I'm telling you, as sure as God made little green apples, your father's involved in another one of his schemes. <laughs> well, it's an awful thing to say. Now, how could it be father's fault to the shortage of silk panties? I don't know. I don't know. I just know your father. Every town, every one we have practically been laughed out of, there was a serious shortage of some ridiculous thing before I found out what he was about. Mama, silk unmentionables. How in the world would pop up? I don't know. I don't know if we're going to watch him. We're going to watch him, we're going to follow him everywhere he goes. And another thing, Heather Heatherton, I don't ever want you to trust a man who cannot tell you the truth until the day after tomorrow because of his conscience. My conscience has forced me to make a decision. I will be there for this historic occasion, no matter what the cost. Oh, you don't know how that's going to relieve Charlie. He made no bones about being scared of sitting on all that gunpowder. You can tell Charlie to stop worrying. I've decided that I'll be the first to go up. You want to go first? Why not? It's my brainchild. I conceived the idea, and I have no qualms about risking my life on my genius. Charlie's dreamt of nothing else. It'll break his heart. I'd rather break his heart than have his life on my conscience. You seem so sure. Of nothing but death and taxes. Hector! 
And the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Time to rise and shine, Mr. Chris. Here's your coffee. you in now, Charlie. Me? Trouble? What do you mean, Mr. Chris? I'm no trouble. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, how I long for the time when I can just lie here suspended in space. Or even up there, hmm? I know just what you mean, Mr. Chris. You do? After the tumble you took out of that hammer? Well, you know that old saying, you can't keep a good man down. Let me fill your cup, Mr. Chris. I only had one sip. What are you up to, Charlie? Me? Up to? Just because I serve you coffee in bed doesn't mean I'm up to something, does it? <laughs> well, I'll eat my hat if you aren't. Thank you kindly, Mr. Chris. I knew you would understand. Honey, you sure he said he was coming? Yep. Yeah. But does he understand it's today and not next Tuesday is what I want to know. No, he made up his mind, all right. Oh, just relax, Charlie. It's your idea for him to be here. Yeah, why don't you chance it? Go now while the going's good. He doesn't have to be here to check it. It's just the model blown up in size. Blown up? You two don't give a dang about my neck, do you? Look at you, throwing that gunpowder around like it wasn't my life's blood. Are you sure you told him exactly where we'd be? The sun rises in the east, right? I told him to walk away from the camp with the sun hitting him right in the face. He can't miss it. That's a fine situation. I'm going up in the air in a contraption, figured out by a numbskull that can't even follow a straight line with the sun on his nose. Well, Charlie, if you feel that way about it, why don't you forget the whole thing? Yeah, nobody's going to hold it against you, Charlie. Do you have any idea why Hector's so anxious to be here? Well, it smells kind of fishy to me. You think he thinks something wrong? Well, after all, he, uh... He did... He did what? Well, he did have something on his mind, I think. Did he tell you something you're not telling me? Oh, no, no, not exactly. Well, I mean... He has his mind set on being here, if you know what I mean. I don't know what you mean. But I'm going to count ten, and Hector or no Hector, I'm going. A man can only die once. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine and a half, nine and three quarters. Come on, Barty, give me a hand. I'm going. Hey, look! Mr. Heatherton! That's about time! She wouldn't let me out of my sight. She wouldn't let me out of her sight. I had to go miles that way before I could double back. Let's get at it. She's smart. Oh, I, know it. I haven't got much time. I've got to get back. Promise me one thing. Let me be the one to tell her I was the first to fly my invention. That's all I ask. What did you say? If I tell her, I can pick the right time. But if she hears it from you all, she will butcher me before she listens to one word. That's your problem. You never told me you were going to be the first to fly, did you? Yes! You did. I've decided to take my proper position and responsibility on this project. It wasn't an easy decision. I've got eight children, and if anything happens to me, I... If you try to fly before I do, something's going to happen to you right here. Children or no children. Nobody's going to take away my chance for recognition. 
I've waited a lifetime for this opportunity, and no one is going to... All right, now, wait a minute. Wait yeah, a minute. you're both grown men. There'll be no fighting. Now, simmer down. Nothing's going to change your mind? Nothing. You'll have to walk over my dead body if you fly before I do. Nothing's going to change your mind? <laughs> nothing. Put up your dukes, but... Fight you're not like that. Fight nothing. Now, now, just stop it right now. I'm not a bit surprised by your insistence on going first. I came here prepared to convince you if I couldn't dissuade you by logic. The only way you're going to convince me is of walking over my dead body. Nobody's going to fly before I do. You uh, know how cold it is in the mountains. <laughs> How'd you like a drink to fortify yourself for the high altitude? You can't bribe me with a half of a half a pint of whiskey. Anyway, who's afraid of the cold? <laughs> I've got an idea. We're going to draw straws. One who gets a longer straw gets the first crack at that outfit. Good. You got a couple matches? Matches? Give me, I need two of them. Well, well, I don't have any. Here, here. Oh, yeah. All right, Hector. Wait a minute. Why should you get the first pick? Why don't you pick first? All right, you can't insult me. I will. Wait a minute. If you wish, I'll go first. No, you won't. Take that one. Well, Charlie, you win. I win. I win. I'm going to fly. I'm going to fly. I'm going to well, fly. Charlie, you uh, I'm gonna fly. got the privilege of trying to fly that thing, or you can be a gentleman. Give the honor to Hector here. Nobody ever accused me of being a gentleman. I want to fly. <laughs> Let's drink a toast to your success and no hard feelings. Well, as long as you're so neighborly, I don't see how I can turn you down. And maybe you're right about them clouds up there, too. <laughs> Not a bad idea. That's why I brought along this little gesture. I thought one of us might be in need of medicinal support. <laughs> a great idea. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. Not much left there. Go ahead and finish it. Only a mouthful. Not a bad idea. <laughs> be all right. I spike your whiskey with a little formula I invented. I call it a Mickey Finn after the bartender whose idea it was. I'll name this flying machine after our friend here. We'll see to it that his contribution does not go unrewarded. Hector! Look! Hector! <gasps> hey, hey, hold on to me before it's too late. Get over there, Barney. You ready, Hector? Yes. I'll run just as soon as you light the fuse. Hurry, match. hurry, hurry, hurry. Match, match. Oh, uh, Charlie had one. Here, I'll get it. Hurry, hurry. Hector! Hurry, hurry.
Hector, speak to me. Hector. Oh, it, it, Hector, it was all my fault. Yeah, it, it, it was all my fault. No, I, but, but, but don't die. I, you, you would have flown, but I rushed you. Now, now Hector, please don't be dead. I know what went wrong. I can fix it. My calculations and design are right. But my material is wrong. Bamboo is for fishing. It's not for rockets. Yeah, yeah, he's all right. No, no, 